Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from stepbystepainting.net and I am going to show you how to paint this seahorse on a 10 by 20 canvas. So this is one of those long canvases. Um, if you don't want to do this on the long canvas, you could do this on any size canvas, the 11 by 14 or 16 by 20 or whatever size you want to do this on. I used glitter on my seahorse, so I used um, a medium to apply the glitter. So just to give it that kind of like a sparkly finish, uh, kind of hard to see on the camera, but I'll show you how you can apply glitter to your painting as well towards the end of this tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And again, I'm using the 10 by 20 canvas and I'm going to start by painting the background. So this is an underwater scene and I'm going to use three colors for this background. Titanium white, phthalo blue, and turquoise blue. The phthalo and the turquoise blend so pretty together, especially if you add the white towards the top. It'll make a very pretty underwater kind of style background. So we're going to do that first. We're going to paint the entire canvas with the background and I'm going to be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush at any time in this video you need to press pause feel free to do so some areas of the video might be going a little bit fast for time purposes so we're going to go ahead and load our big flat brush in the water and kind of tap it dry you want to let your brush be a little bit wet still not entirely dry um, that is, that's going to help with the flow of the paint and it also help thin it out a bit we're going to load it in the blue, so that dark phthalo blue color, and we're going to start at the bottom and paint kind of a curved direction. So all the paint strokes are going in this inverted curved direction, and so I'm working from the bottom up. We're going to go up about five or six inches with this blue, and again, I'm doing all curved. So even though I'm going in a curved direction, I am making sure that my brush stroke goes from one side to the next. It's not stopping in the middle. It's the strokes are one long continuous stroke. And so I'm just going to keep going up with that blue. If you need to thin it down a little bit with water, you can. And then we're going to introduce our turquoise into this. So without rinsing the brush, load the tip of it in the turquoise. So there's the turquoise right there on the tip of the brush. And we're going to start, we're going to blend this. So when I blend, I introduce my color above the color that I want it to blend into. And then I introduce that into the color and I paint over that transition zone several times. And when you paint over that, it blends it together. This turquoise is a little bit more opaque than our phthalo blue, so it's coming off a little bit stronger, but that's okay. And I'm just gently blending that transition zone. I don't want all of it to end up turning the same color, so I'm not going to introduce too much turquoise down where that blue should be solid blue. And then we're just going to keep going up with this turquoise. There's a lot of turquoise in this painting, so we're just going to keep going almost all the way up with this turquoise towards the top where I have my canvas on its side right now towards the left side that is where the white is going to be but we're not going to need the white for a while we're just going to keep going with this turquoise keep doing the curved strokes it might be tempting to paint straight and I guess if you wanted your paint strokes to go straight in the middle you can you're allowed to change paintings to different things if you want but I am um, making sure my strokes are going curved the entire way that's going to give it this really pretty underwater effect I'm just going to keep going with this um, I add teeny bits of water to the brush. I'm not scooping up water because that's going to make it too wet and that water might seep down under the paint and things will get really messy. So about two thirds of the way up or a little bit more than two thirds of the way up is when we want to introduce this white. So again, without rinsing the brush, you want to load the tip of the brush in the white. Start with only a little bit of white at first because this is the area where it's starting to get light turquoise, but we don't want too much white yet because we still have a lot of canvas to cover. 
So work that transition zone a bit where that lighter color meets our turquoise and just gently brush that white down into your turquoise. But then as we go up, we want to have this part of the water get lighter and lighter. And to do that, really, we're just adding more white to our brush and going up. So I brush my paint on the palette a little bit sometimes and that to mix the color on the palette and then introduce it to the canvas. So that might help if you um, don't want to blend the colors on the canvas. And we're just going upwards. I'm loading my brush in just the white at this point. It still has turquoise on it, so there's still bits of turquoise in there. But I'm not over blending. I like that streaky look with the white and the turquoise where it's unblended. And we're just going up. By the time you get to the top of your canvas, it should be bright and white. You might find that you'll need to rinse your brush off and kind of start over if you get to this point and the color is still not bright enough. So feel free to like rinse the brush off, dry, and then add just the white. But at this point right here, it should be bright and white. Um, it's okay if there's a few strokes of lighter turquoise in there. It doesn't have to be pure white, but it is the brightest part of this painting. So. We are also going to do some light rays shining down into the water. And for that step, you will need to rinse your brush. So I'm just, uh, before I do that, I'm just kind of doing a few strokes of white down into the rest of the painting. Um, keep in mind that, especially towards the bottom, that part is drier by now. So it's not really workable. So you want to just kind of leave it like it is and it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, there's gonna be a lot of things going on in the foreground, so it's okay if your background's not blended perfectly. So we're gonna do the light ray things next, and for that, you definitely need to rinse your brush off because we're gonna use just the white and freshen up some titanium white on your palette as well. So get this brush all cleaned off, get all that turquoise and phthalo blue and white off of it. Try it. And we're going to get some more titanium white onto our palette. So uh, we don't want to load our brush in the water at first and we want to dry it. So I loaded the tip of the brush in the white and I dried it off with the towel. So this is like a dry brush style technique because it shouldn't be solid. It should be kind of uh, translucent and dry, which is why it's called dry brush. I'm using the tip of the brush. And I'm doing these like ray style strokes. So starting at the top and we're just doing these angles, this array of light that's coming down from the top of that ocean where that sun would be shining through. And so you're just moving your brush in like an angled direction, but only using the tip of it. Let me kind of hold this at different angles so you can see. So. I'm just using the tip of the brush and you're just dragging it really fast, kind of releasing the pressure as you go down. So it's kind of more firm at first, but then letting go when you get to the edge. And when you let go, that gives it that really thin kind of ray of light that just sort of disappears down into the ocean. You can do as many as you want. You don't want to overdo it though, but just a few little ray strokes I could have it extend down just a little bit further in the darker area. But that is it for our simple under the sea background. And so next, we want to let this dry. I'm actually going to use what's left on my palette to paint the sides of the canvas so I don't um, waste the leftover paint on my palette. So I'll do that and dry this painting. And uh, for the next step, we're going to be drawing our seahorse. And you just want to make sure everything is dry before we do this seahorse drawing. So this is my dried painting. I did the sides with the leftover paint on my palette. And I'm going to use a piece of chalk for this drawing. So just a regular white piece of chalk. It erases on the canvas. 
we're going to draw this big seahorse and I'm going to start at the top and mark about four and a half inches down. That is where his head is going to be, the top part of his head. So just going to start my circle. If you want to know how big this circle is, I ended up making my head a little too big in this particular drawing. So if you wanted to, you can make it a little bit smaller than mine. But this head's about three inches in diameter. It doesn't have to be exact, but just to give you some estimate on how big I'm drawing this guy. So about a three inch circle. And do a circle. So that is the head of our seahorse. So seahorses are very simple lines and shapes. So there's my head. Then I'm going to do a long curvy line. I'm going to start at the top, kind of in the middle of the circle, and I'm going to draw it down and loop forward for the belly area. And when I get towards the bottom, I'm going to do a spiral for his tail. And then on the top part of his head, top right part, I'm gonna do his back. I'm gonna go down and connect his tail. So I can adjust my drawing if I need to. If I wanted the belly to go outwards a little bit more, I can. Kind of form that shape with that chalk. Anything we draw with a chalk can be erased. Uh, a wet paintbrush I mentioned, but I find the best way to erase chalk is with a soft baby wipe. Uh, you don't want to press too hard with that wipe because you might lift the paint, but it does lift up your little chalk residue when, when you erase it. So I made the tail a little bit thicker. Uh, the tail just kind of forms up into the bat, his back. For his snout area, I just went outwards, a little inward curve on the end and then back up to the circle part of the head. And then this guy has some spikes on his head. So I'm doing kind of these inward curves and that go outwards to a point. So I started on the top of the head. I went down to about the middle part of his back and then a little bit lower than the middle part of the back, I did the dorsal fin. So two little diagonal lines and then some loopy lines on the inside of that. and I can make his tail a little bit larger. So this is a large seahorse. It takes up almost the entire canvas, which is kind of the point of this, this design, which is to do a large seahorse. I did a little eye in the center. So then, if you're done with your seahorse drawing, we can go ahead and paint our first layer of paint in. And the colors I used for him are cadmium yellow deep, kind of a dark yellow. If you don't have cad yellow deep, just find any yellow that looks a little bit darker than a brighter yellow, I guess. And titanium white. So the white is going to be really helpful with coverage um, because yellow tends to be a see-through co color. Adding that white into it is going to let that be opaque enough to go over our dark background. Um, and we will be using a three-quarter flat brush. So that same brush that we used for the background, we're going to go ahead and use that brush to fill our seahorse in. I'm going to load my big flat brush with equal amounts of that yellow and white. So on my palette, I'm just basically mixing those two colors together and I'm going to fill in the shape. So I call these contouring strokes. It just basically means that we're painting in the direction of our shape. So the belly of our seahorse is going curved. That's the direction that my stroke should be going in. Um, when I use two colors. I tend to like not mix them on the palette, but mix them on the canvas. I like when the, the white just kind of gradually blends with that yellow, but doesn't over blend. So it gets, gives it kind of a two-toned look. And we want to just fill this in. If you're noticing right away that there's coverage issues, meaning 
you're painting this and way too much of that dark is showing through your paint depending on what kind of brand of paint you have it might be too see-through um, my suggestion would be to paint the entire seahorse white first let that dry and then paint your color over it and then you should have uh, no problem with coverage at that point um, but this one's doing pretty okay there's a little bit of dark showing through but utilizing that white helps get it to be uh, more opaque so I'm just going in and filling in the entire shape of the seahorse just kind of letting those two colors blend gently together I'm not really worried about if this side has more white or if the other side is darker just filling it in um, there are some smaller areas that might be kind of hard to fill in with your flat brush. If that's the case, you can grab your number four round brush and you can use that brush to fill in the, the curvy areas, especially the snout and the tail. But the flat brush should be okay for these big areas, just filling in the circle. So at this point, I'm going to grab my number four round brush and I'm going to use that to start doing the tail. Also notice I am not filling it in exactly to where my chalk line is. I'm kind of adjusting the design a little bit as I'm filling it in. So that round brush is helpful for the snout and the tail and any of your other smaller areas. You can adjust the edge of the head a little bit with that brush, wherever your big flat brush couldn't get to. And you can alternate between the two brushes. Just adding a second coat right here to the belly area, make sure we have enough coverage. Get all that turquoise is painted over. I found it helpful for the tail to start at the end and then go to the bottom part of his back. Um, you might be opposite, but that just helped me with this spiro. And you just want it to be thinner at the end of his tail and his tail gets a little bit thicker towards the beginning of the tail. I used the round brush to paint the dorsal fin and I did that with just the cad yellow deep and none of the white. So there's my brush. Didn't rinse it off, I just grabbed the yellow. So there might be a little bit of white still on my brush, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna paint in that shape. And I'm doing strokes that are going diagonally. 
thoughts going in kind of a diagonal direction. Um, I found it helpful to outline that shape first and then do your diagonal strokes to fill it in solid. So just painting it in with diagonal strokes. So it might be a little darker because we didn't add the white into that, but that's kind of what I was going for. Loaded some fresh white on my palette and then on the base of this dorsal fin, I did add some lighter colors. So I grabbed white on the tip of my brush and then on the base of that dorsal fin, I'm just dragging that paint outward so you can kind of see how the base of it is lighter and it just kind of fades in with the rest of it. And then I did the same thing for the spikes along his back. I used the darker yellow without the white. I outlined the lines and then I filled them in solid. Then, as an added little stylized thing, I did, I extended those, the tip of those spikes, but I just kind of extended it with like a loose sort of wavy line, and I added another color to that later, but it was just a creative little direction that I went with this seahorse. And I'm just filling it in with kind of a second coat of that deep yellow color. When you are ready to erase your chalk lines, you can use a wet paintbrush or a baby wipe. Just be very careful. You want to ideally do this when your painting is dry. And just very gently wipe away the paint line or the chalk line. Um, the, the baby wipe is helpful because it removes the chalk residue too. With the wet paintbrush, it tends to leave residue when it dries, but the wipe tends to lift off the chalk residue. You just want to be careful not to press too hard because you don't want to lift off any of the paint. So if you have leftover chalk lines, that's what you can do to get rid of your chalk lines. Next, we're going to use our round brush to kind of divide our seahorse up into these little trunk rings. And so we'll be using the four round and the titanium white. So um, grab your white, your round brush, 
and we're going to start kind of at the top right part of the head and I'm going to take this and do a very loose thin line down and it curves with the shape of the seahorse. So we'll be doing two vertical style lines, except they're not vertical, they're curvy, but they're going in a vertical direction, I suppose. And so there's our first line. It kind of goes to the edge of the tail on the right. And then this second one, I'm gonna start a little bit to the left of it. It's gonna curve outwards with the belly. and then go more inwards to the tail. I'm going down and then I'm at the outer, the right, the left part of the tail at that point. So we have two division lines and then we're gonna kind of divide this up horizontally to make these little ridges. And so I'm doing this and I'm doing these curved lines in between the other, the two vertical lines that I did. And I'm just going downwards with them. They're kind of further spaced apart as I'm going down. They vary in thickness. So some of them are thicker lines, some I'm doing thinner lines. So just very loosely with that white, just kind of dividing this up. And then I stopped when I got to the tail. I'm going to do something differently on the tail. Um, and then I'm going to do some more ridge lines over here on the left part where is the belly is. So going from one line to the edge kind of reminds me of a spider web. And then this one going to the edge, this one too, this one. These lines are a little bit less curvy. Some of them are more straight. That Those two lines ended up being curvy to the edge. And then I'm taking that white and just kind of loosely outlining the far left edge of the belly. Then I did a few strokes um, kind of inwards. That was kind of a creative direction I took with that. You don't have to do that. You can just simply outline the far left part of the belly. Next, I'm going to add some color to my seahorse, some more color to it. Um, I freshened up some of that deep yellow color, but I also added medium magenta to my palette. So I'm going to utilize that pink to make some orange colors and also pink. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do actually is make, mix the yellow and the pink together. That's going to get you an orange color. And then I'm going to add this orange color kind of on the inside of some of these little plate areas of the seahorse. So in this middle region on the far right part, I'm just kind of stroking a shadowy area on the right part of it. Just a few strokes forming kind of a triangular shape. Um, don't think triangle, just kind of fill it in on the right part. We're really gonna do this kind of abstractly. Um, we're doing this simply to add color into our seahorse to make these little plated regions, re regions have like different colors and um, it's not just one solid color and um, it gives it kind of a shadowed look. So over here on the right I did the same thing but I added more yellow to my brush to make this part look lighter. So it looks more like orange right here. And kind of the same thing, just a few strokes and just kind of let it fade away into the yellow. Did one more piece down here. So notice how I'm not covering all that yellow, that first layer, just adding kind of another layer on the end of it. So right here, I did a little bit more white. So I added white into my orange color to give it kind of a different look. But I started on the right part, but over here, I added some on the left part. So you can kind of uh, you don't have to do this exactly the way I'm doing it. If you want to add these colors in different areas, you can. You can change up the, 
the amount of color you're adding. You could even skip this step if you don't like how that looks. But the whole point is just to add more color and depth to our seahorse. And then as another stylized technique, we can paint little dots. And I did dots mostly on the far right part of his back. And I did that mostly with the pink. So I'm just taking that medium magenta color and I'm dotting it. Just on the far right part of his back, I'm just adding clusters of dots. They are inside the little ridged plated areas. And I took that pink and just did a few little kind of curved strokes here and there. And then I added some more dots up in the head region with the pink. And if you want to, you can add some white into that pink to make some of the dots lighter, give it some color variety. I did lots of dots up here, only because the head didn't get a lot of stylized things going on. It's just kind of plain. Uh, we will do the eye here in just a little bit. And then I wanted to add some pink to the dorsal fin and to the back part of him. So I did a little bit of pink on the base part of the dorsal fin, so just some diagonal lines. And right here where the line cut kind of wavy on the tip of those spikes, I just took that pink and just kind of extended that outwards, um, kind of wavy to make it look like it's flowing with the water. And then I'm going to freshen up some titanium white. I'm going to finish off the tail. So we have these like little tail rings. And so basically I'm going to take, so you know how we did those curves on this body area? I'm going to take those curves and I'm going to extend those curves downwards. So um, also as I'm doing that, I'm going to do the little curved lines. So it looks like the edge of the tail on the right kind of goes in a spiked direction. So you're just doing the curves along the tail and you can just take that all the way to the end where it curls. And then between each of those curved lines, you have a curved line that goes up to a point. And you might have some of that yellow sticking up from where we painted it in. So we can extend this out a little bit further. No, my hand is in the way right there, but I just did the curved line between each of those tail ring lines on the tail. And then we could add color in between that if there's blue showing inside of that spiked region. Um, I took my pink and I did more dots along the tail region. And then I also used that pink to fill in the far right edge where that spike is. So anywhere um, when you added the spikes to the tail, if you see any of that blue ocean part still showing through, you can take the pink or the yellow. Um, I took the pink and filled that in. And then I went back in and added dots along the edges. I'm going back in and making that line a little bit thicker so that there's pink and white on my brush and a little bit of yellow still. And I'm just extending that line and making it thicker so the edge of it has that texture, that bumpy ridged texture. Then I added a little bit more white on the far left part of his belly. So just kind of outlined it and then extended that white inwards a little bit. There was still some pink on my brush, so it ended up being kind of a light pink. I also went in and added some details to the snout. So I took the titanium white and on the end of it, I painted an oval. So there's my oval and you can see an opening inside of his snout. And then I took the white and just kind of loosely outlined the top of it, just kind of gently brushed the top in the bottom, adding more color in that area. I also took the pink 
and loosely outlined the top and bottom of the head and just kind of loosely filled that in at the top simply to add more color in that area. I also added pink on the inside part of his snout. Then I loaded my palette in Mars Black. Wipe the brush off. We're going to use the Mars Black for the eye. So just a teeny bit of black. You really don't need a lot of black at all for this painting. So just a little tiny circle for his eye. Uh, let that dry and then you can do your little white dots inside of that circle to do the highlight in the eye. If you wanted to utilize the black to add maybe some more dots in there, so maybe there's some darker dots in there, you can, you don't have to. I'm going to show you. So I just took that black and did a few little darker dots. And then when your eye is dry, you can take the paintbrush, add a little bit of white on the tip of your brush, and you can do like one or two dots in the upper part of his eye. Then I decided to take my white and kind of loosely outline the top part of his snout. I went on the top part of his head a little bit. Doing this loose outlining kind of helps things to stand out a little bit better. I added the little bit of white on the edge of the spiky things that are kind of flowing with the water out here. Same with down here. So that little bit of white right there on the tip of the brush, very thinly, very loosely, just gives it that added pop. And then wherever you feel like you wanna kind of make things pop a little bit, maybe we can do a few little white dots in there. And I outlined the far right part of his dorsal fin. So just where these inward loopy line spikes are just on the far right edge of that gives that a little bit of pop. That line just a little bit under the head. Again, with this loose outlining, the goal is just to ha have it so where a few things pop, we don't want to outline everything because then everything just kind of looks too bold. Um, we're going to jump into our bubbles next. So this is super fun. Basically, with your round brush, we're going to just paint bubbles everywhere. So you can do perfect circles if you want. I wanted my bubbles to be kind of like oddly shaped a little bit so not exactly circles but kind of more organic and some are a little bit more stretched or oblong um, you can see what I'm doing here so they're not exactly perfect circles which is fine because painting per perfect circles is a lot harder than doing it this way so I'm just kind of doing I did like a column of bubbles above his snout but I'm just kind of doing them everywhere because bubbles are so much fun to paint did a lot up high and then uh, I did a few down low in this area because it's so dark the bubbles are going to show up very very nicely against that dark background and then along with doing your odd circles I also recommend doing like just dots so next to the bubbles there's like dots and maybe these are smaller bubbles and then we're going to add color into our bubbles so you don't have to do this if you're simplifying this painting if you find this too detailed you don't have to basically i started with the pink this is the medium magenta mixed it with the white so pink and white mixed together still using the round brush and on both sides of each of the bubbles on the inside i just did one or two curved strokes just on the inside edge of the bubble, not outlining the entire circle, but just on one side and then there's a gap and then on the other side. So I'll do this really slow here. One side, other side, one side and other side. So for the larger bubbles, you can do multiple strokes that kind of fade into kind of a pointed shape. Or for the smaller bubbles, you're really just doing like one or two strokes. So you do this to all of the bubbles and then we're going to go and do the yellow. So the wherever that gap was, we're going to add yellow to that part. So there's our pink layer. Go ahead and rinse your brush off and dry it and then load the tip of your brush in that yellow color. So yellow. And where that gap is is where you're gonna add the yellow 
to the same thing, but we're going in a different area of the bubble so with the yellow. Um, with those bigger bubbles, I didn't do the full stroke, so I just did like one curved stroke. So I guess you can say you less yellow than the pink. Um, but keep in mind that that white outline of the bubble, the outer white part should still be white. We shouldn't cover that part at all. We are just painting on the inside edge of our bubble. And then we can go back with our white and do our highlight. So ideally you want to wait until the bubble is dry before doing this, but I got a little too excited and skipped that part uh, and it worked out fine but you're just taking that white and you're doing one curve on the left side of each of the bubbles on the inside part so you will have to overlap your color that you painted on the inside but that gives you that little that highlight that makes the bubble look pretty and shiny and then speaking of shiny we're gonna do these little shiny pieces on the edge of the bubble so on one part of the circle on the edge I'm just doing these three little like diagonal lines on the edge of the circle and that makes our bubble look like it's sparkling so just one little cluster you don't have to do this to all the bubbles so just a little array of light just kind of reflecting off of the bubble And then the next detail we're going to do to this painting is the seaweed. And I used Thalo Blue, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, and Titanium White. So those three colors for the seaweed. I used those three colors to get that really pretty color variation that you see in the seaweed. They're flowing, the light's hitting them differently. So our green is not always solid green. It's got some different tints and shades to it. So we can start by mixing blue and green together and it'll create kind of a dark bluish green. And I use the four round brush for the seaweed. So I'm just painting like wavy lines. Uh, I can start at the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter. Um, but ideally you want the seaweed to be a little bit thinner at the top, a little bit thicker at the bottom, but it could be the same consistency throughout too. That also does, doesn't matter. So the fun thing you can do with the seahorse is to do some layering with the seaweed. So some pieces are going behind the tail, but you can have some pieces overlap your tail as well to kind of make it look like his tail is kind of curled into the seaweed. Another fun thing you can do with the seaweed is add bits of white to it. So when you add bits of white to your green and blue, it makes it look brighter obviously because of the white but it also makes it look like that light is kind of reflecting and making that seaweed kind of glisten so it blends on the canvas. So basically all I'm doing is I'm loading my brush in different amounts of green and blue and white and with each seaweed strand I'm painting I'm letting those colors blend and I'm getting this really pretty varied look with the seaweed and I'm just painting in these like wavy strokes um, you might find adding a little bit of water to your brush helps to get that brush to flow that paint better and you're just kind of painting all different colors of that you have overlapping remember some pieces go over the tail some go behind um, you can extend some pieces up higher into your painting so just have fun and add as many seaweed pieces as you want And there is our seaweed. I just love all the different colors and how it just kind of glistens with the light. And 
This final step is optional, but I told you at the beginning of this video that I was going to show you how to add glitter to this painting. Um, you can use any adhesive. I imagine Elmer's glue would work as long as it dries clear. It should be fine. Um, this glazing medium tends to be a little bit expensive, so you don't have to use this glazing medium. Uh, but that's what I just happen to have on hand. And it dries clear, but kind of glossy. Um, but it works as an adhesive. So this is the, like the Liquitex glazing medium. Um, and I'm using just a four round brush to apply it where I want this glitter. So I'm just doing it along his back area and I have white glitter, this kind of a thicker, bigger glitter, but I also have this light blue fine glitter. So it sticks to wherever you apply that glazing medium. Glitter is hard to show on camera, so it's really sparkly in person. Um, and then the fine glitter uh, works as well. So um, same thing, you just take the brush and apply the medium wherever you want it to stick and then you add the glitter to it. And when it dries, it, it stays on very well. I've used this for other paintings where I've had glitter and the glitter is still sticking to those paintings from a few years ago. So it does work very nicely. And you just tap the glitter wherever you want it to stick, wherever you apply the medium, and then you can tap it off and you have glitter. So um, another thing you can do is if you wanted to like paint a starfish in the lower area or wherever you have a blank spot in your canvas, you can paint a starfish and then add glitter on the starfish. Um, I guess you can add glitter on the bubbles. I'm not sure how that would look, but you can get creative. I just added glitter on my seahorse in just some areas, maybe sequins. Um, if you want to glue sequins to different areas of your seahorse, you can. So pretty much the rest of this demonstration is me just adding the medium and applying the glitter. I didn't do it all over the seahorse. I just did it mostly on the right part. I did some more of the areas, um, some more glitter areas on his tail and on the back part of his head, but I didn't cover the entire thing with glitter. This tutorial is coming to its conclusion. Hope that you enjoyed painting a seahorse with me. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.